So let me rewind it back. This is about 20 years ago. I go get some food stamps. They send me to this work program up in Compton. I meet this one woman. We go to the Friendship Center. I get introduced to this group. I chat with this group. Weird things start happening. I start meeting different people, having different nightmares about certain people. One night I go out and we go out to eat. We headed back to the Friendship Center on the freeway and all of a sudden this voice come in the back of me and is trying to make a deal with me. We go to the place, people starting to talk about suicide. You know, suicidal talk. Go back home, get confirmation from South Park. They was committing suicide on South Park. So I started feeling weird. I went to the next meeting and this guy named David, he was holding the meeting. He was running the meeting and he started talking in this weird language and all of a sudden I broke up out of it and I seen all of these people chatting and, and like to totally demon possessed. And after that, I was so scared that I didn't want to mess with him anymore. So this is when the gang stalking started to come. Remember I said that there's a spiritual gang stalking and there's an organi organized gang stalking. Organized gang stalking, these are, these are people and they know their mission. You hear what I'm saying? So this is where my organized gang stalking came from. And the spiritual gang stalking was also turned up because of this. The stalking started with tons and tons and tons of phone calls. You hear me? And them parking in front of my house, them being places like, you know, like, like I'm going to the train and one is there and then one is on the train. And, you know, it's like they were showing me how powerful they was and how they were everywhere. And I, I didn't I didn't even understand how this whole spiritual and covert narcissist stuff was not narcissist, uh, the, the organized gang stalking, the, 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 you know, the, the organized one. I didn't know how none of this stuff worked at this time. So I was, I was going crazy, man. I was, I was being followed. I couldn't tell nobody because, you know, gang stalking, it's invisible. It's like only you could see it. That, that's like the main thing that drive a lot of people crazy, man. Because for one, they don't know what's going on. And for two, they can't tell nobody because nobody else could see it. Because remember, the majority of it is spiritual. So I stopped messing with them. And I told certain people and people was giving me their advice and certain people was, you know, telling me that it was good that I stopped messing with them and pray and you know, I got to watch out because it's real easy to get caught up in the coat or something like that. It's easy, man. They disguise. They smell good. They sound good, man. So I'm working out at this park. I get on my bike and then I ride all the way down. I ride down from 76 and Central all the way down to Magic Johnson Park. What's that? 120th and Central. Yeah, I ride, I ride all the way down there and then I run around the park and all of that. And one day I do that. It's months later. I still remember the group, but it's kind of, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not, it's not there as much, the, the thoughts and stuff. It's like I'm forgetting about them, but I, I still remember them. So one day 
I'm coming from the park, I hop on a bike, and I'm riding down the street. And I decided to go down this one street. It was a street I never went before. I, I, I like seeing new things, so I, I, I turn left down this street. And I'm riding, and all of a sudden in the distance, I seen a big male German Shepherd, man. It came out in the middle of the street, but it was looking the other way, like it didn't see me. And I stopped the bike. And then another one came out and another one, three of them now. And then they was looking like all around, like they was playful, like they was, they was, they was full, fully mature. You feel what I'm saying? And they tails was sticking up and all of that. Like they was on one, but they was like so happy to have broke free out of the yard or whatever. You know, they was just playing and sniffing everything in the streets, but looking the other direction. And then all of a sudden in my mind, this voice, that voice that was like, die, die, kill, kill. It said, the things that, that that David said a couple of months ago, it said, if you go against the order and all of this and all of that, the demon, the three demon daughters uh, come and rip your flesh and drag it through the streets and stuff like that. And then I said, the blood of Jesus, like in my mind. And when I said that, one of the dogs turned around and looked at me. Now, understand that I, I couldn't run. I couldn't run. Okay. If you know anything about German Shepherds, right, you know that hopping on the car ain't about nothing, right? You, you know that, right? Especially when it's three. You see, this is why I messes with German Shepherds. This is why I have a German Shepherd. I don't want no pet bull. German Shepherds is close to wolves, man. And when they when it's like three of them, they not going to stop to something that's dead, man. You hear what I'm saying? So I knew that this was the three demon daughters. This these these these, these dogs. It, it like all made sense and I'm just there, man, in the middle of the streets and then the other ones looked at me. And they looked like, oh, hell no, nah, looked at me. And right when they was about to start charging, a little white dog ran out of this, this, this sister's house. It was her little dog, like a little little poodle type dog. It ran and it was like, because at the same time, it was barking in the door the whole time. It was barking in the door the whole time, but my attention was on the German Shepherds. And then it's like when they turned around, I broke up out of it. And 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 they went and the little dog went towards them for for some reason. Poor little dog. At the same time, this old Mexican dude was over on the brick wall on the other side and he said, Amigo, amigo, come, come. Those are German Shepherds, man. And I'm like, damn, for real, because I was just going to hop on the car. But then then it dawned on me like, damn, man, these are killers. And I always understand that, man. All dogs ain't the same, bro. But he was like, amigo, come, come, come. Those German shepherds, like he was saying in Spanish and English. And he had a high brick wall. And then I ran and I jumped on the brick wall and he held me up a little bit. And I'm up there. And then as as... He's on like a ladder looking over the brick wall and I'm sitting on the brick wall like halfway over in his yard and halfway in the street. And then the little dog ran to one German shepherd. Oh my God. And that little white dog turned into a little red dog. Yes. They ripped that damn dog up, man. And the other one, while they was ripping it up, the other one was looking at me like, like signaling into the other one, like, nah, like, let's get that fool. Like, but they couldn't get me at that time anyway, because I was on that brick wall. Plus, I would have just hopped over on Old Boy Yard. But, oh, and then the sister came out. She was screaming. And then 
the owner came out of with with of the dogs. He was another Hispanic guy, and he had like a a dog stick, you know, a training stick. And he started, man, he started whacking them dogs, man. And 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 then I hopped on the bike. I said thank you to the amigo, and I hopped on the bike and I rode home. I thought about that, man. I was, I was so. I was so scared, man. Cause see, at this time, I knew what I was involved in because I was doing research. It was witchcraft, man. Now here's the thing. I don't know if this whole organization is like this because I didn't go to different chapters and do different things with different people. But definitely, most definitely, this chapter I was in was all witches, man. And it was me and another guy, the guy who found the $100. He he wore glasses. He was like a, a you know, like a, for lack of better words, like a nerd type of guy, you know? He was he was cool, but he was weird. I wouldn't never want to hang out with him, you know, like that. But he 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 was he was, you know, he was a humble type of guy. But the rest of them was women. The oldest one being like 76, and the youngest one being about 28 at that time. In our our chapter, it was all females. And it, like I said, it was that guy, and then it was me as the male. I was the young, I was the youngest in the chapter, and the rest was all women. And they were all all sisters too, all with the different um, you know, beads and dreads and different things like that. And like I said, we used to go to each other house to chat and different things like that. So before all of this crazy stuff happened, I get back to what happened after the dogs and all of that type of stuff. But before all of that happened, and these are, let's say, like the good days, you know, before I started getting all the weird feelings and stuff about that. I mean, about the organization. The good days was, I remember when I first realized that this was a, a, a orgy type of a orgy group. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? See, when we got Shakabuku, Oh, girl, she drove me back home. And when she pulled up in front of the house, she leaned back and she opened up her legs and she was like, whatever you want to do to me, you could do it. And she didn't have on no underwear or anything. And I was like, you know, like, damn. And she was older than me. She was like 56 at the time. And I was in my my mid twenties, like I was like twenty eight or something like that, my my late twenties. And at this time, I, I really wasn't. I really look. I really was looking for enlightenment. You see, because I never had no problem with with the with the women's. So by her doing that, it wasn't like it was something new. You hear what I'm saying? So. I turned it down. I was like, nah, I'm I'm really here for the for the chat. And, and she closed her legs and sat up and she was like, well, all right, if that's the case. But my thing is everybody who who I bring into the organization, you know, I like to, you know, I like to give them a favor and stuff. And I'm sitting up there thinking, like, what you talking about? I'm the prize. You know what I'm saying? I'm the damn prize. I'm the, I might not have as much money as y'all, but damn it, I'm probably the damn smartest and handsomest dude in this damn organization. Because half of them was gay. 
Yeah, that's another thing I meant to say. It was a lot of homosexual, a lot of homosexual activities. I knew from when I first was going there that I really wasn't going to be comfortable with that because it was like, like, you know, hand in hand, you know, I don't got no problem with people, what they be doing, but I don't want to be involved in everything. Just like those people who do what they be doing, don't want to be involved in what I be doing. So we can dig it. If they can dig it, I can dig it. But that organization, I'm telling you, it was like 80% or even more, man, of the rainbows. You hear what I'm saying? So where was I at? Oh, so we in the car, we in the front of, we in the front of my, really my mom's place. We in the front of my mom's place. And then we, we, we get this, we go over what we're going to be having a meeting about next week and who house and meet up and all of that type of stuff. And bam, we leave. So she picked me up again and now her attitude changed. Like she want to be super serious and stuff like that. But I still know that she liked me, but she still want to be serious and kind of mean and snappy and stuff that day. But I wasn't tripping because we was going to another one house. Now I liked it. This one, although she was like 60, she was the type that were wore pearls and diamonds and all of that old white diamonds, Elizabeth Taylor perfume. And she reminded me of, of the woman on 227. You know who I'm talking about? The one who's like, yeah, girl. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about her. She reminded me of her. She had money. She was rich. I don't know how she got her money or anything. And she had a husband, too. But he was, like, slow. He was, like, always in the room. He didn't participate in anything. Now I know why he was like that. You will have to go watch the movie called The Skeleton Key to know why he was like that. But back then, I was like, this dude is, like, weird. He just be in the back room, like he's scared to come out. Like, you know, he had a severe avoiding spirit. Come to find out the woman who was, who was driving me there and taking me there, my mentor, she told me that all of that money was his. He, he came from old money and stuff like that. Like they had like a lot of money. They lived in West LA, like um, up in Baldwin Hills, right? Like, they was balling. That's the first time I went inside of a house that was real money, like the little things. Because when I first went up in there, you got to take your shoes off and all of that type of stuff, which is understandable. And then I go up in there and they like giving me a tour. And then the woman who, my mentor, she was like, how much do you think that little bitty egg costs? How much do you think she spent on that? And then I was like, I don't know, like $500. She was like, add another zero. And I'm like, a, a little egg for $5,000? She was like, how much you think that little, that crystal bear cost? I'm like, I don't know. She like $600. I was like, dang, this is, this is like some money and stuff. So when we go up in there, it was already a weird feeling, but not of a feeling of no demonic like that, but a feeling of like a orgy, like a porno. You hear what I'm saying? Because now we turn, we go up in there and it's a big living room type thing. Then you turn this way and it's another big living room type thing. Then you turn right there and then that's when we're going to be chatting. And her gohanzen was like the ones that that is at the top of the list because they sold you different things in the organization, like the Gohansons and different cases to put them in and stuff like that. And they was expensive too. Like the, the least expensive was like $500 or something like that. Right. And they went up to thousands of dollars. So she had the big one, like 
the one that like the the Buddha I have, right? So we chatting in front of that and all of that. But but before before we start the chatting, I go up in there and it's like the 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 couches, but the couches is like that, you know, that castle type. Is it Victorian, Titarian? I don't know, you know, all of that art, that that Da Vinci type, them chairs and stuff. You feel what I'm saying? And there was three females sitting on there, and then they was like one had her leg over her and the other one, you know, like the position, like they all was doing something, right? And I was like, wow. And then I looked, and then it was one right here. She was sitting on the floor in a lotus position reading a book. And it was, she, she had on this bikini top and this real little skirt thing, and it was raised up. You could see her underwear and everything. It was like I was in a sorority or some shit, man. Excuse my language, but I got to say it like that because... I wasn't practicing semen retention and all of a sudden the the spirit of lust gripped over me so damn bad, man. I was so embarrassed because I had an erection like a 14 year old boy in high school, man. I, I had it, man. And then they just started coming in because she she, although she was in our chapter, she had the money. She was popular. When she held a meeting, it was like the good meeting because she had the refreshments. You you will understand why, right? You, 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 you know. So it was people that came from other places to go to hers when she was holding it. And I started seeing people that I didn't see before, but they was all females though, right? And they just coming in and they giving each other kisses on the lips and rubbing each other and caressing each other. like. And I'm like, wow, this is the funnest place in the world, man. Okay, and then we do our chat and then everything was regular and stuff like that. And and it was the guy, the guy with the glasses who found the hundred dollars. He was there. I think it was one more guy. It, it it was her husband, but he was there, but he wasn't there, right? So we was the only guys in in this little mini mansion in Baldwin Hills, right? So we do the chanting, and everything is regular and just like everything. You know, the erection goes away, but I'm still thinking, looking at all these beautiful women. And then they they started to leave and everything. And usually me and, me and my mentor, we would leave and discuss things before she dropped me off like that. And then we'll get ready for next week. Well, this time she wasn't leaving. She was lingering around. She went to the piano because old girl had a big piano, right? She went to the piano and she started practicing like different things because she sung and played the piano for the organization. You hear me? So everybody is leaving except for my mentor, the the person's house it was and and the one okay one house we used to go to was this one woman and she she was a principal for a school that that's crazy honey these witches be principals and stuff Princip she was a principal for like palace verdes high or something like that or west palace verdes or one of them damn high school, she was the principal, the acting principal at that time. Well, she stayed behind the person's house that, that owned the house, my mentor and me and an old girl husband, I guess he was somewhere in one of the damn rooms up in the house. I don't know where he was, but she told me to come and sit next to her on the piano and then I'll 
came and sat next to her and she's showing me some notes that I really didn't care about because I really didn't ask about no damn piano. And then she starts saying that her leg be feeling funny, like numb. And I'm like, okay. And then she like, look, touch it and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because I never was stupid, even if I acted, you know, shy or stupid or something. I always know what what the business is. You feel what I'm saying? But I, I, I wasn't attracted to her like that. And I already told her, you know, but anyway, I knew that this day was going to be something different, though. So I rubbed her leg and stuff like that, and I'm like, where do it hurt? And I wind up giving her a little massage on her calf while she's sitting at the piano. And then the woman, one of the women in the back called her name, and she went back there, and she said, "Uh uh-uh. And then she came, and she got me. And when I went back there, them two damn ladies were naked. And it was like one of them... You, it's like a couch, like a you, like a velvet, like a you. It's you know what I'm saying? One of them type of couches. It's kind of big, but it's kind of small. It's expensive. One of them damn expensive couch. They was there and they was giving each other a massage on the back. And she said, Do you want to give me a massage over there with them? And I was like, uh-uh. You see, in my body, the real me, well, I don't know if that was the real me or not, but it was something like, man, you do want to do this. They will do anything with you right now, man, even though they was a little, a little older. You hear what I'm saying? They was they work out people. So if you work out, it's different. You hear what I'm saying? Now the 76 year old when she went there and her butt bet not would have been there. But the other ones, they were still in the age of a, of attractiveness. Not the 60 year old, okay, but but man, inside of me was like, man, why not? And, and she rich and, you know, the gigolo thing. And, you know, I was into the body games at that time. Man, I turned it down again, man. I turned it down again. I literally had to plead the blood of Jesus, man. While they sat there and licked on each other nipples and rubbed each other and stuff like that. My mentor wasn't wanting to go. She wanted to watch. And I I didn't want to say I wanted to go because I didn't want to be the buster. You hear what I'm saying? But I tell you one thing. I did not touch not one of them damn succubus demons. You hear what I'm saying? I was trapped. It's like they had me. It's like I had to look at him. But look, my mentor didn't, didn't, didn't do nothing. You hear what I'm saying? She didn't do nothing. She was actually upset. She even asked me one day, you you think I'm ugly, huh? And in my mind, I was like, no, I think you stupid. But I'm really here for... The knowledge, I look, I want the Mercedes Benzes. I want the Mercedes Benzes, man. I want them big chains that old boy came for. I want the steroids, like that big buff dude and his wife that's buffered in me. His wife was buffered in me. I wanted that. I didn't want to just sleep around because sleeping around is not that hard. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, man. Myself, I went went back home, and guess what I did? I masturbated (laughs) with those images and stuff like that. Oh, but the other one, my mentor, she was so upset, but it's like the more upset she got with me, the more she liked at me, right? 
So I felt I felt that it was a benefit in denying her because she clinged on even more. But the one who was rich, right? The one who was rich. Before we left, we exchanged numbers, right? After they did they little thing and stuff. We exchanged numbers, right? So <laughs> she she called me. I didn't even think she was gonna call me. We are like like totally we it's like I would do her plumbing for her and she'd give me a damn tip. Um we she totally out of my league, you know what I'm saying? Financially, her connections, all of that. So I'm I'm I didn't know she was going to call. She called me. She called me like two days later, like, like, hey, what you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm sitting up here um, chatting and doing all this square stuff. And she was like, guess what? I'm like, what? She said, look out the window. And I look out the window. Well, I had to open up the door and go outside and look around. Like, And she was parked up in one of her big bodies, right? It was clean too. No, 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 no. That day, that day she came in the Magnum. She had a white, a white Magnum. They were, they was new at the time. She had, it was, it was clean. That was like one of her cars. That was her shopping and running around car. And she came and she was like, Hey, I'm gonna give you 20 minutes. Nah, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes, man. You're going to get dressed and you're going to come with me. And I was like, all right, because she was fun. She was fun. You hear what I'm saying? She was like, you're going to come with me. Everything on me. And I said, oh, give me five minutes. And I came and we went We went all through West L.A. She went shopping. She was offering, me, offering to buy me stuff, but I was like, nah, I didn't allow her to buy me anything. We went to a restaurant. And we ate. I can still remember some margarita falling on my hand and she grabbing my hand and licking my hand and stuff. And I had to snatch away. She was just, she was just so like, so lustful. So lustful. She was a dirty old witch. That's why she was damn lustful. Plus, plus, I was, you know, practicing the body game. And this is one of the benefits of the body game. But this is also one of the dangerous things in the body game. Now, ever since I was young, I knew not to mess with another man's wife. Now, girlfriends and stuff like that, probably sometimes. I even don't mess with girlfriends and stuff, you know. But I knew that she was married. I knew and my mom's knew and my mom's made me feel guilty because she was like, is that what's her name? Is her husband going to be there? And I'm like, oh, man. Look, she set it up for us to have sex up in an expensive place, for us to go on trips. All of that, man. All of that. And I was just so wanting to get the knowledge that I was denying all of that. I was like, nah. And the more I deny it, the more they was just liking me more and and more, she would just call me, man, and, and she would be like, let me tell you something. I'd be like, what's up? And she would tell me all types of nasty stuff she want to do to me. You know, she used to tell me stuff that I haven't even heard. It's like my ears was being molested. I was like, no, I haven't even thought about that type of sexual stuff. Like. Where you learn how to do that type of stuff from? You making me feel like I'm a little bitty boy. You hear what I'm saying? Once again, I'm getting damn tired of talking. This is going to end, man. This damn organization that I'm talking about, they damn witches, man. It's like a sex cult. It's a sex cult, but I understand in, in order for them to get the energy and all of that, man, it, look, it was going to only be fun for me for a little while. It wasn't going to just last like I'm the king and then I'm, you hear what I'm saying? 
probably an orgy or two, but after that, they probably start introducing dudes like the Jehovah Witness, man. Look, this is what the Jehovah Witness do, right? They'll send them pretty girls down the street, right? <laughs> and then you will talk to the pretty girls, and then they'll be like, okay, we'll come back. And then when they come back, instead of five females... And the, you know, the pretty girl is one of them. It'll be four females and one guy. And the pretty girl will be there. Then it'll be three guys and the pretty girl. And then all of a sudden the pretty girl will leave. And then you wind up around a bunch of sausages, man. The Jehovah Witness, man. You hear what I'm saying? That's the same thing that would have happened up in the orgies. This is the same thing that be happening up in the entertainment. Yeah, them orgies and stuff, they be fun first until you look over and you see an animal, until you see an old fat dude, <laughs> until you see a power bottom. You hear what I'm saying? Let me tell you something real quick, right? And that's it with her in these succubus. Now, I could go deeper and tell different things of what happened, go into detail, but I know you got a damn imagination and you can understand that this had, this was going on. This was going on until I broke it off, until I broke the whole organization off. I was getting sexually harassed grabbed, groped, all of that, man. You know how many times my, my package got touched, man? Blatantly. They got so much money. They got so much connections, man, that I guess they think that they could just do it. You hear what I'm saying? But use your imagination with all of the, all of the harassment and stuff. Now, with the gang stalking, the gang stalking. I said that this is where my organized gang stalking came from and the demonic spiritual gang stalking got turned up. The witches can turn up that, that spiritual gang stalking and they also can put you up in the program of the organized gang stalking. I was working at the port. Now they was coming at me now, now I know everything. This is years later. They've been gang stalking me. If you want to know what gang stalking is, go to different gang stalking videos. They was doing all of that to me, all of that. But I knew, I knew who my gang stalkers was. I'll be on the train or I'll be walking or I'll be in the park and I just hear somebody start saying Daimoku. And then I hurry up and I turn around and I'll be like, oh man, they here. It was so many times that I'd be like, oh man, they here. Oh man, they over here. Oh, they everywhere, man. I'm about to lose my mind with it. I get myself into but then I start getting used to it because I start realizing that we do have power in Christ, man. And this is our protection. So I got closer to Christ and closer to Christ to where I started seeing the truth. And he started bringing people inside my life. And these questions was brung up. You hear what I'm saying? To where, for example, I wanted to know, like, what's up with the suicide? And one of my boys, rest in peace, he said, yeah, it was a, it was a Japanese organization, right? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, although all Japanese isn't like this, not all Japanese, but there's a demon that's in Japanese culture that is make them fall on a sword. And I was like, what's that? And he was like, suicide. That's that's another word for saying suicide, like they fall on a sword. And then I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I feel you. You feel me? 
the suicide demon is up in that coat. You hear me? Um, real quick, speaking of that that suicide demon in that coat, Fresh Jeff, Fresh Jeff. I think I think it was you, Fresh Jeff, that said. Fresh Jeff is a subscriber, by the way. I think it was Fresh Jeff that said that he ran into this guy from the Dragon Coat and all of that. And I commented about I met this guy and he was waiting on me by the 7-Eleven. And he was from the Dragon Coat also. And I was, I was, I was telling him about this. Because we start going back and forth, me and the guy by the 7-Eleven, the, the, the dragon coat guy. We was going back and forth after I started, because when I went to the 7-Eleven, he, he was one of them. He was one of them. He just didn't want to tell me and stuff, but he was a demon. Um, he was waiting on me. And then when I came out, he was like, hey, I know you. And he told me my name. And I was like, yeah, I know all y'all know my name. What's up? I ain't scared of y'all. What's the business? And he like, nah, 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 brother. I come in peace and all of that. At this time in Long Beach, I'm already a Van Helsing. So we already know each other. And he's like, nah, I come in peace. I just want to tell you, you know, whoop de whoop This is my name. I'm from the Dragon Cult. But... I know that this is ending and all of that, so I'm trying to make it right. So I come to you with this vow, um, with this little vow of clear stuff. And I'm like, what's that, man? And he said, I know you into the business that you went to. You know they know all your business, right? You know that, right? So, But at this time, I know that they know your business, so I'm not shocked. So I'm like, yeah, okay, what's up? And then he like, whatever you put this on, any one of your product or anything, it'll make it like three times stronger, the best. Nobody would ever be able to 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 get unhooked from whatever you put this on, from food to to drugs to you to whatever, right? And I was like, I don't need that, man. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm past that. And all of that. And he like, nah, this is really real. I said, I know it's really real. I know, I know what you're saying is really real. I know that it'll work just like how you said it, man. Stop playing with me, fool. You know who I am. I know it's really real. I'm gonna get back to the to the organization real quick, but hold on. I'm like, I, I know it's really real. And then I took off my beanie, my beanie and my, my hoodie and my beanie. And I used to have long, long dreads, right? And he was like, I already had dreads before. They was way longer than yours. Like, I'm not impressed by all of your dreads and your knowledge. Like, I, I know, like, way more than you. All I'm saying is that I'm breaking away from what the dragon coat. And this is how I make a living. So, it, you know, you is into business. I'm into business. You, you want some of this? I give you this free sample. And then you come and then you get your stuff from me. And then, you know... Oh, everything. This is the 7-Eleven right on Broadway and Pond up in Long Beach, right across the street from King Fish. It was a, it was a good fish market, not fish market, but fish restaurant right there across the street from that 7-Eleven. And uh, I was like, nah. So we going back and forth and all of that type of stuff. And then he's getting angry and I'm getting angry. But I don't want to leave because I know that this is a real demon. And, you know, it's rare that you actually see him like, hey, this is me, uh, you know. <laughs> he was short. He was a short dude. He had little curly hair. He looked like one of them people like you don't know they race. He could be like a mulatto or a Creole or... You you understand what I'm saying? He was one of them type. He was short, smooth skin. He was handsome. More looked like more leaning towards the the feminine type of features, but still masculine though. But he he was attractive. You hear what I'm saying? And he he was he was like, yeah, man, this and that. So the reason I brought him up is because. 
we talked a little bit and I was like, hey, what what do you think all of that Nam Yo Ho and all of that? And then he was like, oh, not only that, but Krishna is a deaf frequency. And I was like, oh, that's what it is. And he was like, you gonna pay me for that? And I was like, man, they, they, they always want something, man, these damn demons whether they in the mist or they damn manifested right in front of you, man. I wanted to take that damn thing for him, but I knew that it'll work, but it'll turn on me. I, I knew that, but it was so tempting. And plus he gave me that favor with the, with the deaf frequency that I, I almost took it, but I broke up out of it. I broke up out of it because I knew he was trying to get in my mind. I broke up out of it and I was like, hey, hey thanks. I'll just pay you with a thank you, man. I mean, information is free, right? And he smiled at me, man. And then he just walked away. And I was like, that's what I came up here for, to know what that thing in that house was that day when we was chatting. The thing that say, die, die, die. You know, that thing, that, that demon, that guy, in front of 7-Eleven that night, he told me, he said that that is a deaf frequency and Krishna, Hali Krishna. I never studied Krishna. Um, I, I skimmed through it, but I seen him in the airport and different things like that. And when I was searching for enlightenment and all of that, they was on the list. They was on the list. If they would have came, then, then I would have probably did it and all of that type of stuff at that time. But after that, that demon guy told me what he told me, it all started to make sense. It's a damn deaf frequency. Now, I'm getting gang stalked. I'm up in Long Beach. This is years later. I'm getting gang stalked. I'm a Van Helsing. I go to the port one day. Then all of a sudden, I smell this smell from this guy. They put in my trailer, they usually pair you with somebody who's going to, you know, be your partner, especially if y'all both good. You see, so my, me and my me and my forklift driver, we used to take turns. He had forklift for like half the day while I... I load and unload and then I forklift while he unload and unload and we had a good routine and we we was beating a lot of people you know what I'm saying we we was the the big producers it was us and like these paisas that that offloaded and loaded the most so I don't know why they traded him this morning they put him all the way on the other side and they put me in the trailer with this one dude. This dude, he had dreads, right? Little, the little dreads. And he he ran all around the place. He did push-ups, pull-ups, all of that type of stuff, right? And then I was like, oh, this dude is active. Like, we about to, you know, we about to beat the Pisces, right? We about to beat them at the work. Because at this time now, they, you know, they is doing the most, if if you do the most, then Marcos, he's going to always pick you to come in the morning because in the morning it's a competition. It's, it's hundreds of people sometimes trying to get up in there. If you at the top of the list of producing, then you this is what we're doing it for, right? To work tomorrow. You hear me? So I'm like, oh, we about to, man, I'm about to be working all month with this dude. But when he come up in there, I smell this smell. And the same smell that I smell is at one of these people house. You hear what I'm saying? When you smell a smell and then all of a sudden. It just it just. Bring you back to like a certain time. 